Hello, I'm Shane Tucker. I'm one of the paleontologists here at the University of Nebraska State Museum. And uh, if you guys don't know where Nebraska is, we're right here in the middle of the country. I don't know where you guys are watching from today. And if you guys have any questions as we go throughout, please uh, put that in the thread line below and we'll get back uh, to you within a few days. And my job for the museum is to monitor highway construction projects and collect fossils from those projects. Nebraska is extremely rich in fossil resources. We have fossils from 91 of the 93 Nebraska counties. So anytime that you're out there or there's any disruption of the surface, whether it's to build a parking lot or a foundation for a home or even a highway, uh, there's a chance that fossils will be encountered. And so uh, what, we'll, what we'll look at today is one of the sites that we discovered over 10 years ago from Western Nebraska in Kimball County. Uh, this is a project that we did in, in 2008, 2009, but the story goes back all the way to 1996 when a few of the bones were discovered on the site of a road cut. And the bones you see in the case, the, the upper arm bone there, and then the one coming here that are white, those are the bones that were eroding out of the ditch. And my former boss uh, discovered those and we ex excavated around them and found additional uh, backbones as well as a pelvis from an ancient lion that lived somewhere between six and eight million years ago. Now, what was interesting about this fossil lion, it's the same size as the African lion that lives today, is when we started to clean off the bones and study them in a little bit more detail, uh, we could look on the bottom end of this bone here. This is the forearm bone, so the skinny bone on the outside, and this knob right here is what you could feel back here on your elbow. And on that bone, if we look at the bottom of it, we can see two little circles down here. And if we flip that bone over, we can see little circles right here as well on the other side. Now, when we began to investigate this, uh, we knew that those were actually puncture marks or bite marks left behind by an animal that was chewing on this lion's arm bone. And we could look at animals that we found out at the site, and we could place this uh, pointy tooth here called the canine tooth, and we could put that directly into the holes and it matched up extremely well. So we know that there was a bone crushing dog living six to eight million years ago that came across the bones of this lion and started to chew on the end of it just like your dog would do at home today with a bone. And so, uh, so that gives us some evidence of some interactions between animals that were living millions of years ago. So that's one of the animals that we found out at Kimball was the lion. We also had the bone crushing dog. Um, one of the other things that we discovered as they were moving through these equipment were uh, carving through the hillsides exposing these river sands is we actually found bones to a lower jaw from a rhinoceros. And as you can see from the picture here, sometimes when heavy equipment or road graders or bulldozers run over the top of bones, they crack them up. But if we're able to pick all the little pieces up, we can glue them all back together and we basically have the entire jaw. And so this is from a rhinoceros called the barrel body rhinoceros. It would be uh, similar to the animals up at Asheville fossil beds, just a different species that was living at the time here in Nebraska. And this is a full adult animal of that particular uh, species. Now, the other thing that we find out there at Kimball on the project um, are pieces of, of giant tortoise. These are land turtles that lived, and they're extremely large. They're related to, or modern day relative would be the Galapagos tortoises. And those today uh, can be weigh several hundred pounds, uh, be two to three feet in length. And this shell that we're seeing here in the picture here was one that after the construction equipment discovered some fossils, they left an area, area for us to dig uh, using shovels and trowels. And with this one, we were able to clean off the upper shell. This is where the head would come out. This would be the tail end back here. So the head would come out here. The shell is about two and a quarter feet wide and about three feet long or a little over three feet long. And so we covered up, we can't just grab and pick fossils out of the ground because it would fall apart. So basically what we do is cover that shell um, with a layer of toilet paper to keep the plaster from sticking to it. And then we dip pieces of, of burlap, which is a fabric 
into the plaster of Paris and we build up this hard outer shell around the outside. Once that hardens then we're able to, to lift it up out of the ground and after we put all the plaster over the top of this particular animal, the uh, casts including the shell as well as some of the surrounding rock weighed over 2,400 pounds. And so we're gonna go over and take a look at that here in the museum uh, as we've cleaned off the city. So as we were talking about before, layering up the pieces of burlap, this white outer portion is just plaster of Paris and then those burlap strips. And when we originally brought it in here, the sand was about this high above the shell. And we just used small little, little needles and scalpels to slowly remove the sand and get down closer and closer to the actual bone. And so what we're seeing here is the uh, lower shell. And we know from uh, modern day uh, giant tortoises that the males have this large dip in the bottom shell. So this is the side that we didn't see in the field. We actually saw the portion of the upper shell, which we can see the same shape down here underneath this curve going towards the top. So we removed the sand from the bottom shell. Um, eventually, we are going to uh, cover up the bottom shell with plaster again, then we'll flip it over, and then we'll peel all of these layers of plaster and burlap off, and then clean off the upper shell. And then it'll be able to be displayed in the museum or used for research in the collection. Now, what's interesting about these, these giant tortoises, this particular one probably weighed four to 500 pounds when it was alive, is extremely large one of the largest we have here in the collection, is just by even finding a piece of shell just like this, this is going towards the edge of one of those tortoise shells, is um, that tortoises today, these giant tortoises, can't tolerate freezing temperatures for very long. So just by finding a small fragment of shell, uh, we know that Nebraska was completely frost-free. And so the animals on this Kimball project that were exposed because of construction tell us what Nebraska was like six to eight million years ago. We know that there were rhinoceros on the landscape, there were horses, there were camels, there were giant tortoises, there were lions, bone crushing dogs. We also know there were elephants at that time living here in Nebraska. And so all of those together uh, tell us Nebraska six to eight million years ago was a lot like the African savanna is today. Um, or maybe even more of a grassland uh, environment today that we're seeing and uh, all provide clues. So one thing that you can do uh, as, as you know being a paleontologist or wanting to become a paleontologist is you can get outside, you can go explore, you can make observations, you can ask questions about what those animals uh, might be, make hypotheses, and then look on the internet and see if you can figure out exactly what they are. You can also contact us here at the museum. Most of the discoveries that are made in paleontology are not by paleontologists like me, they're by the general public. And the general public will find something, know it's something unusual, maybe extremely old, and contact the museum and we'll go out and take a look and see if it is something that would be, um, the museum would be interested in collecting or we can at least tell you what that thing is. So as you watch this, uh, if you have any questions for us here at the museum, please leave a comment below in the thread box and we will get back to you uh, with the answers to your questions. So I just wanna thank you for uh, tuning in to the museum here today. And if you have any questions, please get in touch with us. Thank you very much.